It's nice, right? Hopefully it doesn't put people to sleep. But. <laughs> John actually said he, he wanted to come, but uh, John, oh, John, okay, yeah. And John Michelle was in is Japan. Yep, I sure am. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I tried. This is the loudest it gets. So, um, Grant, we've got everybody in here. So, whenever you're kind of ready, and um, I don't know, like, so I'm at 57 percent on on my uh, on my screen. It, it's pretty small, so I don't know whether I should like zoom in or have everybody kind of screen closer or what. What do you think? You can zoom in or. Um can you zoom it from the browser? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm at 70% range. I mean, this is just, you're kind of missing stuff too. Yeah, I'd say. Seven. Yes. Is that better? Yeah, anybody that's in the back that wants to come on, feel free to just wheel, wheel yourself up. Um, Brandon, so you can get going whenever you want. All right, okay. Well, how's everybody doing? I can't see anyone's faces this time, but anyone there who was, um, anyone there who was at the last meeting? Yeah, and I'm as good looking as I was then. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, I got you. Okay, 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 okay. Keep it moving on that one. <laughs> so anyway, guys, um, let me tell you what the theme is over here, and this was kind of a cool one. Chris and I... Um, Chris and I, Six Futures, we had a little project in between this time since, you know, the last time we presented and the first time. We did a Power BI project for a company, right? Or, or we're doing one. And basically what happened with the company was the company got pretty surprised by just how easy it is to put Power BI into AX because, A, they were under the assumption that they had to buy a bunch of expensive, you know, setup and hardware and didn't realize just how much is actually free. I mean, you know, 
free, um, truly free. And well, I guess as long as you have the regular Microsoft stuff, you know what I mean? And the other thing too was um, they didn't realize just how fast it is to really start getting out reports. So we go to this company that's had, you know, you know, you know, that's been trying to develop reports for the last, I don't know, six months or so. And we basically go within 15 hours and produce the very first five reports. Um, it took 12 hours for the data and three hours for the development. So that ought to give you guys a very good idea. And, 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 and after it happened, you know, I was talking to Chris about it. I was talking with some other people at Computer Futures. And we just sort of talked about it. And we realized that, wait, you know what? Let's, you know, be fun. Let's give an example just showing just how easy it is to use Power BI, how fast it is this time with AX. And this goes, the particular example I'm giving you guys is for 2012, 2012 R2, 2012 R3, and, um, and um, AX7. But if you're a 2009 shop, um, you can very easily adapt the same code to Power BI. So keep that in mind. You do not have to have AX7 to have Power BI. It's just that what they did was they added a professional license for Power BI within AX7. That's the only difference, the $20 per person per month. But as you guys will see, and I hope you guys walk out over here, you'll see that it really doesn't even take a license to get started and start getting some benefits or even for evaluation. So if anyone remembers this, this was the dashboard from last time, but now it's in Power BI. What I'm gonna show you guys now is, let's take a classic case together, real fast, and let's actually walk through a very, very classic case of, of something that everybody wants to, that everybody cares about, customer aging. Well, I don't know, I don't know. Does anyone here, does anyone here not care about being paid? I can just hear all of you just volunteering. Yes, I don't, I don't, I don't. In truth, um, in truth, guys, customer aging, received but not invoiced, those are probably the two most common financial reports that I'm asked to write at the very beginning. Age sales orders follow very closely, you know, things like that. That's very, very close. So let's take an example of customer aging right now, okay? And let's use a little bit of our AX knowledge that's going to apply, like I said, to the four versions of AX um, and the fifth version, even with a slightly different change if, you, if you're on 2009. Um, and let's go ahead and do a real quick Power BI um, dashboard. So first up, guys, here's the challenge. And by the way, I did this for the, I did this for the CEO in, in 30 minutes on our first conversation. Um, and then after that, he bought all into Power BI. Let's go, whoops, let me come over here. Let's go into AX real fast, and someone's going to ask you, and, and keep in mind, because we're AX, we're going to combine a little bit of functional and technical knowledge, okay? What I've oftentimes found is you can significantly cut down on technical development if you understand, how, if you understand your way around the, the application. I mean, and I, and, and I think everyone that I knew, everyone that I met at the last meeting definitely understood that because of the experience in the room. And I'm pretty sure everyone at this meeting understands that too. So we got customer aging guys real quick. How would you go ahead and update customer agent? Can anybody tell me real quick, any of you financial implementations real fast? What would you do? Menu item slightly changed in seven, but not much. We go to, we go to common, we go to collections. We pull up collections, right? And pow, there it is. This is Contozo. And we would start to look at it. Now, this isn't bad. This is pretty good. And truth be told, a lot of people like this, and this is a very essential part, right? You set up your buckets, of course, so that, so that these categories are going to be however your organization looks at it, depending upon, depending upon your receiving cycle. You go ahead and you look at this, and, you, and you've got an eye instantly. But wouldn't it be great if we could track this? You know, the one problem with this is that, A, yes, it's going to give you aging for today's date, but sometimes we're not interested in that, or at least the last time that you ran it. And then B, a lot of times people will say, okay, I want to see how the company's improving over time, right? You know, are we, are, are we improving our receivables process? Very essential. So we need to take more control of it. Plus, we might want to link this to some other things that we need to be able to analyze. In fact, very often we do. All right, first thing is AX contains a very easy way to be able to generate aging data. Um, Known, known to pretty much anyone who's, who's had to write an aging report before, eventually they discover it, if they do it enough times. Um, 
all of the application logic that you need to be able to go ahead and record customer aging over time is right in here. Aging snapshot, whatever else. And what it does is the effect of running this. Now you guys see I'm using 121 2013. That's because I'm using the Contozo data. This is a CU11 AXR3 on my um, on my little sample machine. And what you guys will see over here is you guys will notice that I had to turn it to 20, 2013 because the data was a little old. <laughs> but I click OK just like that, right? After I've set my buckets in, what happens is something very, very special. AX goes through some, some, some seriously complicated logic, right? To give me something quite beautiful. And let me show you. If you're on the technical side developing, this is the only thing you need to know. That option plus this table. <laughs> if you're on the business analyst side, this is also the thing you need to know. Except that you also need to know how to, how to configure buckets, right? And do a few other things and talk to the business and make sure that you determine, you know, how they want to read this. All of it is stored in here. All of the information is stored right here in this custom aging table. These aging period of one, two, three, four, five, six are whatever you set the buckets for in the parameters. Your data is straight right there. So believe it or not, you just finished, you just finished getting a point in time customer aging report. So what do you do then if someone, what do you do if you're at a company that says, I want to be able to see customer aging over time in order to be able to attract the efficiency of my, of my reporting process? Easy. You just copy that data into another table and record it every single, you know, I don't know, depending upon how big you want the table to be, daily, weekly, you name it. That's it. Very, very easy technical thing to be able to give to someone on that, and it's a powerful report. Okay. Let's go, let's go back and go a little bit further. I only had 15 minutes, but let's, let's take this for just a moment. So next thing you know is I went back and captured, um, I told the CEO, okay, let's wait. Just um, Can you give me about 30 minutes? And he's like, 30 minutes for what? To go write the customer agent report. Just give me 30 minutes real fast and let me come throw it at you and then let's see what you, what you think and give me revisions. And truth be told is, you know that until someone sees a report very often, um, you're not really going to get the true, true feedback until you at least give them a prototype version or something in many, many cases. So writing a quick prototype is oftentimes a thought exercise more than anything else. So I went back, finished up the customer agent report real fast, pulled up, pulled up Power BI, once I had the table down, came in, let me pull this up, got a quick little dashboard going, and the CEO told me that he really, really liked pie charts. There was just something about pie charts. And pull this up just one second, guys. I had this accidentally delete it but guess what now you get to see me regenerate it i deleted it by accident by accident right before our um, lecture got it back got it back got it there we go that was easy i basically dragged and dropped this in five minutes Published it right up to an Office 365, which basically went into Power BI under their free license. And keep in mind, this was an organization um, that basically saw me publish this for free. Now, keep in mind, this too, guys, this was an organization that basically was looking at very expensive BI software, okay? So they had spent months evaluating the process, months looking at this, right? And you're talking about coming in in 30 minutes, I kid you not, and doing it. Um, and so we walked right back over. I dragged it over, made a few pie charts, only because he said he liked pie charts. I, I could have also used any of these, but he was like, I really love pie charts. Oh, okay, fine then. I'm just going to go ahead and kill it with the pie charts. Boom, 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 boom. And while I'm at it, I'll even do something like throw some rankings on them just for fun. Less than or equal to the top five. Unfortunately, when there's a tie, though, that can be an issue. So I probably should change it to, you know, stop at five or something. But technically, this was the top five on the rankings on each one of them. Published it right over there. Now we'll go back real fast. Forgive me, always developing lots of dashboards. And back to my other system now into Power BI. 
see if I've got it back. Under my free account, of course. <laughs> Load it. Load it up, and this should be there, refresh for me. There we go. Got it. Ah, and everything's nice. Now I can share that. Hit it to a dashboard very easily. And guess what? It's 100% mobile support on Android, Apple, and Windows. Okay. Got it. That was a customer agent. 30 minutes. Dragging over the pie charts didn't take much, much longer. Now, what do you guys think first seeing that? I mean, just honestly, what are your impressions real fast? I know we don't have long, but what are your impressions just seeing, I mean, yeah, this was not... This is not my gold standard report, but at the same time, the fact that I could give this to somebody or the fact that you can instantly get something out, I mean, I can tell you this saves so much time on requirements gathering and whatever else when you can produce a prototype very quickly. We, um, what you guys aren't seeing are the five other dashboards that were, repro that, were um, that were produced that went into a lot more depth. Those took three hours to do. Well, 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 well 15 because of the gathering requirements. Any impressions? Silent. <laughs> it's very, uh, I mean, fast for development as well as like it's more visual, right? So you save time on uh, develop. There's no development time associated associated with this, and it's just like if you have a Office 365 account, you can share it across your uh, bosses easily and see it on a phone Ooh. basically. You got it, you got it, and you see why it's extremely popular. You see what really shocked the company, believe it or not, was this was this shocked them, right? Chris will tell you that. This surprised them. They were very happy. But what yeah, really surprised them was afterwards. That's it. No expenses involved. Is the integration only for Office 365 or is it integrated other? Everywhere. It doesn't have to be dynamics. Power um, the Power BI Dynamics includes a Power BI license, and seven and seven seven basically includes an iframe that can display it. But you could just as easily do it in Enterprise Portal. You could just as easily do it in any integration. Power BI works everywhere. It's just that for those of us in Dynamics, we have a key advantage because we understand we understand how the application works in the data set, which cuts down on requirement time considerably. Okay. Right. Yeah. So it could be any data source. Yeah, so uh, yeah. does it go to AOT or you're directly connecting to the database? I mean, I haven't used Power BI yet, but that's something we're going to start in the next year. We are on 2009. You mentioned that uh, for 2009, I guess there is some kind of workaround to use Power BI, right? What was that? Well, just the data model is just slightly different. Very slightly, okay. not much. Just very, very slightly on the test staging. That's all. Because of the so dimension, it, because of the dimension model. It comes with some kind of templates or, or, or just it kind of knows how to come up with, because I believe like it has to know what data it has to pick up and from where, right? So you got another data, yeah. Right, you didn't show that aspect, but I'm assuming that the tool has the necessary intelligence on the basis of some predefined templates or something like that to identify what information should be picked from where. So it directly talks with AOT and get all the information or it's connected to database? That's an excellent question. That's a oh, beautiful, beautiful question. Okay. So Microsoft included a content pack for AX7, right? Okay. Where they included some sample Power BI dashboards. But those don't substitute for a person knowing the data. Now, for those of you, though, in AX, um, how, would you, how would you find the data source of something like this? Let's, let's open up AX real quick. Right, We've all been doing this for years. Hmm? Through AX7, how can you still access this? this and you said there was a workaround for 2012 or, or 2009. Is there a way to still get these access to Power BI? Yeah, definitely, definitely. See, see, Power BI will work with any SQL data source. Right. Okay. Anyone at all, um, 2009, whatever else. The only thing that I showed you guys that was a little bit different, and this is, like I said, you know, I mean, 
you know, know the data model. I mean, or at least know the parts of your data model. But let's just say that we walked in and, you know, you know, we were we we didn't know what data model, but we knew the general form, right? Couldn't we come over here, very very common, and hit personalize information, and boom, start looking at the data sources. Oh, there it is, cust aging table. Hmm, wonder what that does. Direct party. Hmm, I bet you that pulls a name. You get the point. Very, very commonly, the way that business analysts will, in fact, carry out mapping, right, for the developers, is they'll start clicking personalize, or if they're not, um, very, very quickly as a tech arc, I'll train them on how to do that so that they can do the mapping documents very efficiently to save us time. Um, very, very classic. Or if you are the person doing the mapping, you just do it yourself, right? Look right over at the closest form, and then, and then after that, start exploring the data set. I thought the views for seven were already defined. For Power BI. Excellent, excellent question. So, okay, beautiful, beautiful question. All right. They came out with the content pack and they came out with aggregated entity views, right? So, this is where Microsoft produced out of the box starters, just like they did in AX 2009 with the cubes and AX 2012 with the cubes. These were out of the box starters that Microsoft designed. Based upon, based upon a general audience. Now, these had success. Don't get me wrong. These are very good. In fact, all the ERP products have them. And aggregated entities follow the same concept where Microsoft is designing a company's BI needs in advance. But, 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 as we found out for the last so many years now, every company seems to get a little bit different on what they require and based upon their business processes. And so in that particular case, they're going to require some of their own customization. They can do it well, in AX7. Code you put in when you deploy. You've got a beautiful question about the aggregated entities in the content pack. Um, I wish I could show you guys some of the other some of the other dashboards we've made for this project, but I can definitely tell you that they're they're a lot different than the content pack because the company had different needs and and, and I had to modify the BI for their business practices. Definitely, but there still are very good things in the content pack. I'm, I'm saying that's a very good thing, definitely, the out of the box. But there is something about just being able to pull in your own tables. And the idea behind this, guys, is not to substitute for the, um, this doesn't substitute for the requirements gathering process. No software does. And I can tell you guys that as a tech, tech arc, very commonly, you know, I'll talk to companies who bought something expensive and they'll be like, ah, Brandon, you know, we just thought it was just gonna generate all of our data instantly. And yes, yeah, some of the software does include a data pack, um, any of the common ones do. But at the same time, I've never met one company where I did not have to go in at some point and we didn't have to produce some reports based on requirements. And the idea here is to get beyond the difficult technical atmosphere of having to develop, you know, that requires a developer and to be able to place it in the hands of, you know, maybe like your Excel savvy business analyst who's got a technical niche. Or maybe, you know, to be able to get out reports a lot faster you're, you're, for your technical person. But, but your, effort, your, your half hour scenario effort of doing this stuff is based on the, on the assumption that you know your, your data views. You don't know your data views. That changes your time frame. I'm not saying the value of the tool is there. It is. Right? Because you can drag and drop and have some fun. And for me, reports and dashboards, to your point, are best done via two people, three people sitting around and kind of messing with it, right? Because until you see it, you don't know anything, generally. Oh, you are right. You are right. You can go through that mapping process. The rest of it is just becomes easier for you to do on the fly. You are right. You are right. You are right. And what's and what's the big difference between the BI? Um, what, what's the biggest difference between the speed of the BI developers usually once they once they understand the technical part, understanding of the data model, because of because of the ability to be able to cut down on the mapping. Very very true. Very very true. And you're correct. There's no substitute for it. I mean, no matter how much software is released, at some point to get into a company's custom processes, someone has to be able to traverse the data model. That's right, and 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 I don't want to sell, and and I don't want to be a smoke and mirrors type person either, and not and um and um underemphasize that point. Only only the ease of development for this, the cheap entry point compared to you know what traditionally used to be there was. Remember, we used to have to go through MicroStrategy, Tableau, Atlas, things like that, and you know there was there was a very high entry point. This is the first time in my career of you know 20 years 
where I can where I can truly say that I was able to go on a project and use free licenses and do something like this. Yeah, I'll just add uh, on. That, that really <laughs> so, so I what I've done for a couple of folks is they have seen reports that they've worked that they already like and they, they've already worked with, and, and you know, it's an SSRS export to Excel and they could have not had it and whatever, right? And I tell them to give me that ugly big thing, and then you can you can slide that directly into Power BI as acting as your data source, right? so you're faking it out to some degree. Right. Then you can make it look pretty and give them the information that they want in a nice and nice fashion, get at what they're looking for, then go back, connect to the data source, and then tie those together. Right. So you can rapid prototype based off of some junk that they give you. Come up with an idea, concept, move into it, and then move into the heavy tech of mapping that piece out in those sections. Right. A way that this tool, for me, the Power BI has changed kind of the approach to it. You don't do it that way. But then, I mean, again, so I'm at a point where, you know, like early next year, we have to decide which way we want to go. You know, either we want to kind of get on to Power BI because Microsoft, you know, has been kind of screaming and, you know, kind of doing all kind of things with Power BI, or continue with the tool what we have. We're using Zap. Um, it's one of the another analytical tools. You know, it's a third-party company, but the tool works fine. Um, only you know it's not from Microsoft, right? The the the, the basic which goes beyond in that tool also like that you again you know it has like cubes and whatnot. So the assumption is you know your data and you know you already have data model available for the tool to show your data, right? The way you want to do. It. Now if I compare that tool with Power BI, I guess they both work same way. There's there's no advantage which Power BI by itself is offering me by doing anything. It's just giving me a presentation like much much neater presentation. I think uh, the advantage is like see if you host or publish your in house on premises reports on cloud on Azure basically which is integrated with BI. Okay. If you are presenting something to a client, say in Europe, it's available at your tips actually. You don't need to connect anywhere and everything is like kind of available in the BI tool. But, but published on the cloud. But, yeah, but there's criteria behind that. So if they're in house active directory yeah. And all their authentication is in house and not published through any type of broader. They right? can have and an ADFS sure thing. That, right. So if you haven't if you haven't federated your ADFS, yeah. then 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 when you publish, you have to publish literally to the web. I mean anybody can see it. I don't know any company like that. So you gotta be a little bit careful with how you Yeah, I mean I'm saying just few ADFS. accounts, two accounts just for demo purposes, once yeah. you're traveling. But not for all, that's for no, security. Yes, yeah, agreed. So, but it's just it's a it's a nuance that it's missed. Right. right. You go how come I don't have that? And, well, the big thing is an expectation that you can have. You got it. Think, you know, I think he's on to the right point. But the, 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 yeah, so there are some of the other tools are, are fine, the other tools out there, no problem. But but what they're driving is the mapping to seven. And so that pack is the starter pack that you're moving. Yes, so you're online. Uh, yeah. You got and so you got some problems with the okay. No problem. But but you're moving to an, a much more advanced. Uh, the, the now there is one more thing I need to tell you guys. Right. Uh, and this is just the architect coming out a little bit. For those of you who are on the 2012s, right? So just like you mentioned before, aggregated entities, right? For AX7, but for those of you on 2012, how would you be able to start on, say you just wanted to pull some sample data and then begin dragging and dropping it? Because that's basically all you're doing is dragging and dropping to be able to create that. Where would you look inside of AX to be able to get that very quickly? Anybody want to take a guess? Any developers out there? AX includes a series of views, right, called perspectives. Perspectives are basically, are basically the models of the cubes. So you can pull in your AX 2009 and 2012 cubes, which, by the way, they're going to be coming out with in, in AX7. They just haven't yet. And you can pull these in, and you can actually use these to instantly make a connection, the budget cube, the human resource cube, the invent table cube for, for inventory, the ledger the payroll, so you can actually make very powerful Power BI reports. 
very, very quickly. Remember, guys, it's all about the shortcuts on knowing about the data model. If you know the shortcuts in AX, I can tell you right now, it's very easy to be able to instantly produce things. The content pack, if we had done another session for an hour and a half, I could have produced it. But, so I, I don't, I'm not trying to go against what you're saying, but, but if that's the case, Teaching Point is the existing tool of these collections just as easily. So you mean like an existing tool? What's that? Does that connect to the cube? Connect exactly to the database. Yeah, it connects to the cube. The cube. So you know, we have processes which kind of populate the cube every every like three hours. So you can go find the cube with that one of the yeah. Yeah, But if you don't you don't have that. Uh, uh, look, yeah, if you don't have that and you're looking for a tool and right. you're on AI. Question is what is the economic concern? Again, you know, if if I'm looking at the replacement and you know, if I really wanna kind of stick with the product which which is kind of uh, gonna be a product of future, right? At least right now, the way it is, everybody's talking about Power BI. I'm just trying to kind of contemplate like that. Indeed, that's the case. I mean, eventually, when we go on AX7, I guess I see lots of advantages. You know, when we go there, we we're just gonna go to 2012 early next year, and then AX7 probably like three years, two years from that. So I'm at a you know situation where I'm I need to decide like, do we want to continue with that? Uh, obviously, they came up with their newer version now which comes with about 100 plus templates, which I was talking about. So whatever different, you know, like can report what you can think about, it would just come up, you know, out of box, those reports. And you can just like, it just, you know, just going in the app and just clicking at one place, and it's gonna give all the data. Now with the template kind of, it, it, it connects to the AOT, and when you are creating those templates, it knows on the basis of definition of the template, like where to get the data from, so it prepares the queues, right? so you don't have to do anything. So there is no customization or developer's efforts needed. So once you get on it, you get like 100 plus reports, you know, just to begin with. So those reports are internal or external? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, um, I was talking to you from a CFO standpoint. Do you display uh, the data to, to clients? Yeah, you can. I mean, again, it has... Clients to, or is, what, what is your, what, it comes your to major output? Uh, you know, so the reports are kind of defined to cater different kind of, you know, people from your company. So there internal. are... Internal. Yeah, internal. So, uh, but you can actually, it's up to you because it's a, uh, you know... So it's but it's it's you your sales vision, for example, using the data and presenting it to their customers? Uh, they, our our upper management uses most of the data to understand, you know, where the company is going, you know, okay, from the internal internal. so internally used, and okay. you know, again, the tool could be used, you know, from your cell phone, from your, you know, tablet, and again, you know, on PC. So it has like whatever you need, um, you know, to be able to statistically look at the data. So <laughs> I'm just looking from a perspective, uh, from a perspective where if it doesn't have intrinsic value for the customers who are paying. Paying customers, it has not so much of a value to think in the context of a lean uh, culture of right. your company. Uh, it may not have that much value. The second is don't write what what works right. to the point where if it works and it, you know and how long how long and how much it's going to cost to redesign, implement, and roll, roll out this new solution. Right. Then yeah. time we can compound what um, I remember it's your name, but what you saying that you know it's true power BI is and very powerful unit, part of itself. However, is how much value do you derive from that that will make it uh, the time focus on changing from that to Power BI right. something financially relevant? Well, we're using a life cycle of that. Uh, uh, we have been using it for like been upgraded. No, we have been using it for two years now, and like we just did the most latest update. You know, create like the so the reality behind it is the company has been even has, has been supported, been appreciated the entire investment. They, they have it, but again, you know, as yeah. what happens now, most of the times, you know, like the upper management, they hear stuff from somewhere, sure, yeah. and then oh, why don't we use this? And like you have to connect to that. And so somebody goes and says, yeah, yeah. Because for them, like you the know, I can year. I can show the existing report and tell them this is about Power BI, and they wouldn't like you know. They yeah, I mean, them. Power BI even as a forecasting component, if I'm not wrong. Right. So if they see those new things, they'll try to push. Right. I mean, yeah. again, That's true. you know, if, I mean, eventually, maybe not now, but. Now, guys. Uh, excuse me. I'm just saying, for, for our 09 2012 people, because, you know, you brought up a good point. For those of you who might just want to get it just working kind of out of the box where you just bring in everything in the data, okay. simply do a get data analysis services, and then go ahead and, and um, import the Microsoft default cubes. 
depending upon whatever you want. That's all you have to do. And I don't know if any of you, um, if if everyone's got um, cubes, cubes, um, the default cubes built in. For those of you who are who are not on seven, um, all you have to do. If you want to do that, it's very common where I'll go to an assignment just to get just to get customers thinking at the very beginning, and go right back to go right back to the default tools right over there. Analysis Services Wizard. Just strictly deploy it. You want to hit the you want to hit the default Dynamics AX. Hit next, and then after that, let it go ahead and deploy. And from there, you can instantly connect, and you'll get the hundreds of reports that Microsoft has. But I will say one thing though. Having heard of Zap and some of the other tools out there, some um, they've also built their own cubes in competition with Microsoft, and sometimes people prefer those cubes over. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, every organization is different. But but if you did want to just get started with Power BI by instantly being able to connect to data, you should do that. So very very helpful to be able to to be able to hear that. Um, it's a good starting point, actually. It really is. You can take your three. Yeah, yeah. Free, but I mean, we have license copy because we just recently upgraded to like Office 365, so that gives, I guess, access to Power BI. Yeah, that's what I'm Because, Brandon, wasn't the company they were kind of debating with going with a BI solution, but then you were like, hold on, you don't have to buy those licenses, you can just do this, and then you show them this in like a couple hours yeah. or something? Yeah, 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 that's what happened, Chris. Yeah. It depends. And yeah, maybe not every company would like it. You know, I mean, don't know. I really don't know. I mean, as an architect, I, I can't say that as an AX architect. There's too many different forms of software I deal with. All I can say is, at least from a point of entry and from an evaluation perspective, there's a pretty compelling argument to evaluate Power BI, at least, and be able to see if it suits needs or whatever else, and particularly because they are really going with it in seven with the iframe enhancements. And also because of the fact that it does get a lot of organizations up pretty quickly. I would say. Yeah, so that's a good point. You bring up a good point, right? You can publish into your VI frame, you can publish into your into the application so that you can integrate some of the stuff right into your views, right? Yeah. 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 Back in the back into the end. So you can take your whatever your screen is, you can custom take that custom screen, take a a visualization that you've created, stick it up in the corner mm -hmm. so you can have some of your working data and then that frame that you've created based on within the eggs and the eggs. Yeah. It's drawing it yeah. like this, yeah. but for the viewer it's in the same point. Yeah. Too. I mean, that, Which is important. Yeah. For the user that's yeah, I'm coming from a company where we have like maybe five or six different layers of applications running concurrently uh, to find out what's going on in the company. It's very tiring. So, yeah. so that's that and it's in right. You can you're in one place and you can embed. I think yeah. that, that's going to be pretty interesting. That's key. You know, when you have one user who just revolves in one environment, and the work that's going to happen is going to use Excel as an export because he wants to look at something pretty powerful. Kind of the evolution of I don't know what the heck the name of it was. In 12, they had a SharePoint dashboard C10, I think. PowerPoint. Yeah. Uh, right, but in seven it's kind of all based with it, right? So, yes, your initial evaluation was right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you said the white portal and just SharePoint on Just SharePoint, yeah. Oh, the version of There's a good, good point to the iframe. Hmm. Yeah. Well, guys, that's it from me. Um, any other questions? Really good discussion. I wish I was there again. Yeah. yeah you're going to miss the burger, man. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going I'm, I'm to come back up there the very next time we do this, guys. So y'all have to see my ugly face again or it, something. It, it's getting cheap on the food. There's going to be Cheetos and chips. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Yeah, see, that's what happens when they're running out. It's going to be Cheetos and food, no. B-I-O-F. <laughs> All right, well, guys, as usual, if you've got any questions, you know you know how to get in touch with me or Chris or whatever, whoever. Um, yeah. See you guys again next time.
We could, you know, I don't know if anybody wants to, but Bryn, if you have time, we, we might, we're going to obviously take a break between Robbie's presentation, but um, you know, if anybody has any follow-up questions or they want to ask him something specific on something he did. I don't know, Bryn, do you have time if, if somebody does want to do that? Yeah, 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 definitely, Chris, somebody. Anybody? Brendan, can you please share quickly a link where uh, someone can get educated on how the data cubes really work and how they are formulated and created? Is there any resource out there, or should I go just to Microsoft website and search data cubes? In terms of in terms of how they really went out and chose the cubes and how they really went it back yeah. and chose the um. Yeah, because it seems like it's compiling a set of data tables part of the data schema, but I'd like to know more about that if my intuition is correct. No, excellent, excellent question. Um, He's recording this? Yeah. Is this available? Yeah, Brandon, we're going to send this link. Uh, you're going to record this and be able to send it out to people? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. definitely, Thanks. definitely. I was just thinking about that too with more information. What what helped me really understand the data cubes was more so the sample machines because they would because Microsoft would include their sample dashboards like their sample performance dashboards or sample power view dashboards things like that. And I found that to be extremely helpful on the data cubes in terms of understanding where they were trying to go with it or what they were envisioning at the time of development. Microsoft does make internal development um, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, internal documents that have much more not, um, information than are released. Um, but they kind of require special escalation to get. <laughs> Brandon, is there anything within like LCS? I know LCS is a big news. Can you go there and get anything from that? Or is that completely different? You can get some things. You don't get that kind of information, though, like the inherent process that they went through. That's, that's Microsoft internal. Um, They'll have some, oh, but, but they will have some information explaining the cubes, though, on MSDN and whatever else. And then I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about any white papers. If you give me a little bit to check, I'll check and see if, I, if I've got any in my files. Because I keep, I store all the Microsoft white papers on my drive. So look through and go see. But I know, I know that was at least a very helpful point for me, was just seeing, seeing the dashboards that they came out with. Some of them have been very nice over the years that amazingly were rarely, rarely used. All right, guys, well, let's, let's take uh, 10 to 15 minutes, get a drink, some food. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good job. All right, well, thank you guys. Big pleasure. I'll see you guys the next time in person. All right. Great. Sure. Fran, I'm going to leave you open. If, if anybody wants okay. to hang out or come grab a drink and then come back in and do a follow-up, feel free. Uh, Fran, obviously, feel free to hang up and go about your night, too. Brandon, I just want to thank you for your blog. Excellent resource. Excellent. I read it all the time. Keep it up, please. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I always get it, so I appreciate it, too. Thank you. I work uh, in Princeton. I work for a uh, cloud company. I work for uh, an architect. Plus, I have my own company. I work full time and I work tech. Is there a route one? No, it's not route one. It's independent. I have been working in York City for nine years. I was here at Microsoft Oh, no, we do take a Microsoft says, I will take Very, very theoretical. Very, very theoretical. Yeah, what we do is like we work with Microsoft and we go to the client and we do POC for them and try to get their application on premises to cloud lift and shift the fast platform and server. So most of the very good. I we recently so we are on the website. And then we just keep two thousand 
we just renewed about four, three months ago. The license is not going to everybody because you know, the crowd that was yeah. entering the hotel has really got many issues and so many right. open questions. And it's not there yet, especially if you are migrating. So it's not there yet for A, but yeah. for yeah. other things it is. Like all here. So, okay, I, I, I need to start kind of looking into that. I have not, I have just used it. I have a developer kind of, which has showed me, you know, but he, he interfaced that with Excel and just, you know, basically whatever your pure table would do, that's what he just showed from the screen that we need to have, how easy it is. Right, um, I haven't tried, uh, you know, connecting with this uh, AX as such. I think you should try this PO, it's free, right? So maybe you should ask your developer to play with it.